appear on pages 88 and 89. So go there and um, follow along as we read. So the rushes were little hollow tubes fitted together at the joints. The tubes squeaked when you pulled them apart. They squeaked when you pushed them together. Laura and Mary pulled them apart to hear them squeak. Then they put little ones together to make necklaces. They put big ones together to make long tubes. They blew through the tubes into the creek to make and made it bubble. They blew at the little fishes and scared them. Whenever they were thirsty, they could draw up long drinks of water through those tubes. Okay, so these tubes were a lot like straws. You can kind of picture this going on. And what they would do is Laura and Mary, which are, they are sisters, okay? If you didn't catch on to that, they are sisters. And they would just play with these tubes. They would pull them apart, push them together, make them squeak. They'd hear that noise. They would make necklaces out of these tubes that they found, um, those rushes that they found on the side of the creek. And they would also blow at the fishes and make bubbles in the water. And then they could also drink the water um, with those tubes too. So they were a lot like straws is what they were. They just um, were plants growing on the side of the creek. Uh, Ma laughed when Laura and Mary came to dinner and supper all splashed and muddy with green necklaces around their necks and the long green tubes in their hands. They brought her bouquets of the blue flags and she put them on the table to make it pretty. I declare, she said, you two play in the creek so much, you'll be turning to water bugs. Pa and Ma did not care how much they played in the creek, only they must never go upstream beyond that little valley, that little willow valley. The creek came around a curve there. It came out of a hole full of deep, dark water. They must never go near enough to the hole, even to see it. Someday I'll take you there, Pa promised them. And one Sunday afternoon, he told them that this was the day. Okay, so what does that say in that second last paragraph? Um, let's reread that just and kind of listen to what we're listening to something that the girls aren't allowed to do. Okay, so Pa and Ma did not care how much they played in the creek, only they must never go upstream beyond the little Willow Valley. The creek came around the curve there. It came out of a hole full of deep, dark water. They must never go near enough to the hole, even to see it. So what clues in this story um, suggest that Laura might get into trouble later on in this story with this? So I feel like by saying this on the text, by distinctly saying they're not allowed to go here and um, that's the only place they're not allowed to go and it kind of explains it a little bit more, that might foreshadow, which means it's gonna kind of um, suggest that Laura might get in trouble later on with this event. Okay, or with going too near to that deep, dark hole. Okay, so it kind of foreshadows. Um, let's go ahead and go to page 89. So deep water. So it says that today is the day that Pa said that they could bring them to this part of the lake. Okay, so deep water. In the dugout, Laura and Mary took off all their clothes and over their bare skins, they put on old patched dresses. Ma, Ma tied on her sunbonnet, Pa took Carrie on his arm, and they all set out. So we have another um, character introduced to the story, Carrie. We have Ma, Pa, and then we also have that um, those two sisters, Mary and Laura. So this is kind of like a family. So we have Ma and Pa, that's like their mom and dad. And then Carrie is their younger sister, and Laura and Mary are also sisters. Okay, and they are at the creek right now, the whole family is. So you can kind of picture what's going on. It says the girls put on patched dresses. Now remember, old, old patched dresses is what they put on. Patched means to, if you have a hole in your pants or in, um, maybe in your dress, then it would be patched. So it would be fixed just by putting a piece of material on that part or on that hole. So they wore their old dresses because they were probably going to be getting them pretty dirty today being in the creek. We know from page 88 how dirty they got the other day and how muddy they got being in that creek. Okay, so let's go on to the second paragraph. They went past the cattle path and the rushes, past the willow valley and the plum thickets. They went, past, they went down a steep grassy bank and then across the level place where the grass was tall and coarse. 
they passed a high, almost straight up wall of earth where no grass grew. What is that, Pa? Laura asked. And Pa said, that is a tableland, Laura. He pushed on through the thick, tall grass, making a path for Ma and Mary and Laura. Suddenly, they came out of the high grass and the creek was there. It ran twinkling over white gravel into a wide pool, curved against a low bank where the grass was short. Tall willows stood up on the other side of the pool. Flat on the water lay a shimmering picture of, the, of those willows with every green leaf fluttering. Okay, so I feel like on that page, page 89, we can really sequence the events. Now remember, sequencing is putting the events in order. So in that first paragraph, um, the family gets ready to go to the creek, right? They're getting ready to head there. And then it kind of also um, explains next how they um, were going through this grassy area to get to the creek. And then they finally got to the creek. And finally, um, it kind of explains how the creek looked, okay? So you can really sequence the events on page 89 too. So they're all at the creek now. Uh, let's go ahead and turn to the next slide and we will read the next pages to see what happens.